don't need a job. And I know that many of you are very troubled by that topic, you know, because some of you, you have a job and you love your job. So you're wondering, why is this guy trying to just create trouble when there's no trouble? Why suggest for the slightest second that you don't need a job? Now, there's a rise of joblessness. Do you agree with me? All right. In view of the pandemic, there's been a significant rise of people becoming suddenly jobless and those who are business owners suddenly um, are having to shut down their businesses. Some of them had begun a business just before the lockdown and somehow had to shut it down. Some of them were planning to start a business sometime in April and for some reason now they can't do that anymore. So there's a rise of joblessness and with that rise of joblessness comes an unquenchable fear. Now, my concern is that the fear that we have is misdirected. Because many of us are afraid, for those of you who have jobs, you are afraid that you may lose your job. And some of you who don't have jobs are afraid that you may not have a job anytime soon. Because when this whole era has passed, there's going to be an overlap of demands of people who are looking for the same job that you're looking for. And some of you here are trying so hard and drinking anointing oil to make sure that nobody fires you from your current job. But the truth is that you don't need a job. So when you buy a TV, you expect that TV to be functional. But when you buy a TV that has a functioning visual and has a faulty audio, we say that the TV is not in the, in the language of Ghanaians, not working. So it's, it's a beautiful TV. It's the most current design. It is a big 70-inch TV. But it has visuals, but it doesn't have audio. What do we say? My TV is not working. Or it has no visuals, but it has an amazing audio a proper surround audio. We still say that the TV is not working. And, and that, that definition is very key. So every part in a TV has a job. Be it in the visual aspect of the TV or in the audio aspect of the TV. If any part of a TV is not working, the TV is defined as faulty. Am I correct? But it's a big TV. It's a beautiful TV. But if one part of that TV is not working, we say that TV is faulty. And that seems almost unfair. Because the designers of this TV have put in so much effort in the TV and they've given you a big, beautiful TV with all the recent technologies. It's a smart TV. You can use your Bluetooth. You can use your green tooth. You can use any tooth on it and it will work but it has visuals, it doesn't have audio. Just one simple fault, and you call that TV a faulty TV. Because a part of that TV is not working. So when you buy a TV, the TV comes with different parts, different, different components, and every component in that TV that you bought has a job. Now, to help you understand and appreciate this fact, every spare part in the market may be working. But you know the spare parts in the market, as at the time they are in the market, they are jobless. Do you agree? Okay. Every part in that TV has a job. Every part in the spare market is jobless. But one part in a beautiful TV that does not work puts the entire TV in jeopardy, just like your life. And that's why this is very, very key to all of you here. Because many of you, you have a beautiful life. As a matter of fact, many of you, you have a big life. You have a popular life. But there's a part of your life that is not working. And because that part isn't working, it looks like every part of your life is faulty. Have you, have you, have you noticed that before? If you are a married man, and you have a beautiful wife, a very respectful wife, and you have amazing children, like eight of them, all A students in school. 
but you have a terrible job or you are having a very bad time in your office, do you know that your office experience can impact on your family life? Do you agree? And some of you have an amazing job working with an oil company, for example, and you've got an amazing wife, but your children are giving you nightmares. Do you know that that part of your life that is not working can impact on all of your life? Just like the TV. The real concern here isn't the part of your life that has a job. If you are married, marriage is activated. Am I correct? If you have children, parenthood is activated. But the real key there is not the job factor. The real key is the working factor. It is what part of your life is working that really matters. A part of your life that is not working can put every part of your life in jeopardy. So now that we understand that backdrop, let's come back to what is a job? What is a job? It's on the screen. A job is simply a paid work. A job is a paid work. So a job is simply work for which there is payment. Am I correct? So anything that you are doing that you are not being paid for is not a job. We are talking commerce now, essentially. So when you bought the TV, you gave the TV a job. And you expect the TV to work because when you paid for the TV, you paid essentially for the TV to what? Is it to job? No, you paid the TV to work. You can have a job but you are not working. It simply means that the part in the TV that isn't working is not jobless. It has a job. It simply means that it's not delivering for what it was paid for. So you can have a job and yet you're not working. You can work without a job like a spare part. They work, but they are jobless. So when you buy a tire from the market, because your current tire on your car has a fault, the tire in the market is working, but at the time that you hadn't bought it, was jobless. Am I correct? When you bought that tire, the tire now had a job. Even though it was working a minute before, it was jobless. This is very key now, hear this, for those of you who are afraid to lose your jobs. We easily discard a faulty follow-com for a working spare part. You need to write that down. It will sink in in like three weeks. This, this dose is three weeks. It takes time. Three weeks it went down. You will easily give up a faulty follow-com which may be (laughs) German-made, and replace it with a China-made spare part or a bar-made spare part. Because what you really want is something that works. And many of us have focused so much on looking for jobs that our lives are not working. So let's get back to the business of work. There's nothing in your life that will work until you work it. Nothing. Even the Bible says that faith without work is dead. And that's a very rude thing to say. Because, I mean, it's it's okay. I mean, I'm trying to be very modest when I say that a TV that has a part that is not working is faulty. I mean, that's a fair thing to say. But when you say that your faith is utterly dead in the absence of work, you, you expose the faith to a lot of ridicule, if you know what I mean. Anything that you are believing for, for which there is no commensurate work, is dead. 
when you see a working marriage, you say, oh, these guys are so good together. Listen, guys, let me just shock you. There is no easy marriage on earth. Any marriage that appears too easy, somebody is doing something wrong. <sighs> if a man is truly committed to one woman, and a woman is committed to one man, it can be easy. Many of you who have children know that even parenthood is not easy. You put their pictures on Instagram, on Facebook, and you write sweet things. But there are some times you wish you could poison them. Everything that is worth having requires work. Anything that is qualified to be pursued will demand excessive work. Even your peace of mind, even happiness will take work. So if certain things and certain areas of your life isn't working, whether as a parent, as a spouse, as a businessman, as a staff, as a boss, as a child, it's possible that you are not doing enough work or you are doing the wrong work. Everyone with a job is paid to work. Not everyone with a job is working for the pay. And if you understand this, you should be worried. Because what has happened in the past three months around the world is going to change the dynamics of everything. The fabrics and the texture of the commercial world is about to change. Anybody that wants to employ anybody simply will employ you strictly for the work going forward. For the work. Any customer that will buy your products before they bought it because you are their cousin's cousin. You know, ba? Now, if it's not working, it's not working. So, if you want to be paid for what you have, make sure that whatever it is that you have has the potential for what? For what? For work. So, on Monday mornings, we say that we're going where? I'm going to work. So your office is your place of work. It's not your place of job. If you understand this concept, you will never need a job again. Because jobs will need you. That is the, that's the essence of this conversation. That you never need a job again when you understand the concept of work job will begin to need you. We have pursued jobs so much that we have forgotten how to work. And this has happened to me many times. People come and say, look, hey, please give me something to do. Give me something to do. Then you finally engage them and they are not engageable. Oh, I will teach you what you need to know about. Everybody is driving towards anything that works. And that's why you have some maniacs online selling potions on how girls can attract men. Have you seen it before? Why are the women buying it? They want something that is worth working. If you sell anointing oil, they will buy. If you give them potion, they will drink. So the foundation to any success, to any growth, is in the work. Joblessness has never been the problem. Worklessness is. We have never had an issue with joblessness. If everyone is looking for something that works, if you work, they will find you. For many years, we've had a furniture company. And until sometime early this year or late last year, we have never put a picture of our furniture online. Every furniture in this space came from our company. 
until early this year, I think, or late last year, we have never, we had never put any picture of any of our furniture online. 90% of every job that we have done came from references. You know why? Because it's what? Working. I've had a friend of mine who is a major importer of furniture from China order furniture from us in the tone of over 40 million. He is an importer from China. But he ordered furniture from us in the tone of over 40 million. Because I think I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing I may be wrong, but I think it's because we are doing something that is working. And now you need to understand also that the furniture that we supplied to him were more expensive than the alternative he had to bring it from China. So he had no reason really to use our furniture. Except that it was working. Someone told me recently, she found out that her company was owing us money. And she called me. She said, I'm not happy that they have not paid you. She said, because you work too hard not to be paid. I must say work. Everything can work. Everything can work. But it will require work. <laughs> Your business, ba, in this corona can work. Your relationship, in spite of all the naked women on social media, it can still work. Your idea to publish a book can work. But it will require work. Don't be too busy doing nothing. Busyness. Is not the same thing as work. Working doesn't always equal productivity. So many of you can leave this meeting and say that I first said we must work. And you can get all busy doing nothing. That you are always preoccupied with ideas and activities does not equal productivity. Must be productive. Passion doesn't always pay the bills. Do you agree? If my passion is to write a book, many of you will say that a person that life is too short to do anything for which you are not passionate about. So I want to quit my job in an oil and gas company, in a furniture company, because I want to author a book. See, ba, they did you from the beginning. That is the second arrow, and it hit you. Many people have so told me, look, I have a passion for singing. You know, so I've been working on my first album. I wrote my first album when I was 12 years old. So I want to quit my job. And I asked them, so how do you want to pay for studio? And so, sir, I don't know if, um, actually, if um, you have been a blessing to me. <laughs> I know you have so many things you are doing. I don't want to bother you. But the studio man said that the money is uh, 45000 I've been able to save two eight. There are some passion that can pay your bills. Don't get me wrong. That's why I said passion does not always pay the bills. It means that if my passion is to write a book and you give me a job to wash your toilets for which you will pay me a reasonable amount of money and I know that if I do that work for 18 months I'll be able to save money to author my book. My commitment to washing your toilet is following my passion. The reason why I'm washing your toilet is not because I like the color of your pool. It's because I have a book I want to author. 
So I am driven to wash your toilet on account of my passion to author. But many of you won't see that. You will rather quit your job, wear a beautiful suit that you can't afford, to write a book how to make your first one millionaire. So I'm going to teach you how to relate with your passion in the second class. Because passion will not always pay the bills. You want to author a book, but you have a rent to pay. You want to author a book, you have children to feed. And this is more for Christians who claim that they are called into full-time ministry when they start hating their job. Have you noticed when many people are called into ministry? There are very few billionaires eh, that have quit their job to begin ministry. Have you noticed? If you are truly called, if you are a billionaire, you say, look, I want to close my company down. That is the true sign of a calling. <laughs> you say you left all for Christ. You didn't leave anything. There was nothing in the first place to leave. You said, do you know what I sacrificed to, to be on this pulpit? You didn't leave anything. You were still looking for a job. They didn't give you that job. You tried like 18 times. They turned you down. Come on, say work. But productive work can pay for any passion. Did I say white collar work? Did I say blue collar work? What kind of work? Productive. That's all you need. And you can be productive washing toilet. You can customize broom. 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 You can customize broom and sell broom. It's called productive work. The reason why you don't want to give yourself to selling broom is that it's, it's beneath you. And you need to do more work to sell broom than to sell boxers. Everybody around you is already selling boxers. How many boxers will I wear? If you sold broom, you will need to do more work, but in due time, you may have more profit than the man who is selling boxers and cover shoes. But it will take work Everything that my life is about, I devote work to. The thing is that many of you, you see the picture on Instagram, but you don't see the work after Instagram. It's a mindset that is confirmed to succeed anywhere. There were contracts given in Lagos for refuse collection. Right where? People that should pack their things. 20 years ago, would you do that business? But now, there are billionaires that come to pack their tea from your house. And then you are living in a two-bedroom, you are feeling like a guy, insulting them. The owner of that company is a billionaire. Packing your dirty. You see content online, somebody doing videos and having, you know, views, say, ah! This girl is lucky. It's not luck. No, see, she has been doing it for eight years. You found her out the eighth year. Work. If your work is productive, you will pay for your passion. This event is paid for by work from a company. So the work that we're doing is paying for my passion. You don't need your money to follow my this is my passion. Some of you, your passion will become your job. Your job, your passion, and your life need you to work. And hear this word of advice. Let your work find you a job. Always value work above your CV. <laughs> I've never become anything on the premise of my CV. It will be truly injustice to judge anybody else by their CV. Whether you have second class, third class, or coming class. 
if you can get a job done, you can be employed in our company. So when you come and say you want to be an architect in our firm, I just refer you to Uche. <laughs> he will sit down with you for two hours. He says, okay, show me what you can do. Show me what? Do they what? Work. Because you can have a very colorful CV and a very dusty skill. The reason why nobody is listening to you is because you are sharing CV everywhere. We need to see you work and see where you work and see how you work and see what your work can produce. We don't care about your CV. Your passion may be your job. Your passion may need your job. But one thing is certain. Your job must demand work. <laughs> For some of you, what you are doing as a job is actually your passion. Does that make sense? So I'm saying that whatever your passion is, it's okay that you are working in the place of your passion. She's a medical doctor. That could be the place of her passion. It's okay. So your passion may be the place of your job. Your passion may be your job. Your passion may be paying your bills. It's possible. However, your passion certainly will need a job to pay for it. Do you, do you get that? So it's either your passion is being paid for by itself being a job or your passion will require another job to fund it. So the, the, the common denominator here is what? A job. And if you need a job to fund your passion, I'm saying to you that that job that is required can only be sustained by work. Productive work can uncover any future. So when you're done with this class, I will encourage you to take your time and write down your goal and your dreams for the next 10 or 20 years, or maybe for those of you who can see that far for the next five years. And when you write that down, the next thing you want to write is what work does this dream require? Anyone who pursues a job and prevents to work or at the expense of work without trying to be insultive, that person is cost. The person is lazy and the person is a killer of virtue. Anytime you refuse to work for your marriage, for your peace, for your passion, for your dreams, for your joy, for your gifts, every time you refuse to work you are your first victim. So my, my, my closing note to you is walk till your life works. Like